Got it. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna explain this so the folks at home can hear it too. Um, here is the, if you get into its learning, you will find the fossil fuel guide activity. We're gonna work on it multiple days, so don't submit it yet. You can work with the partner if you like. Um, I don't know how that works yet, so try to figure it out. Maybe you share it over Google Drive. I don't care how you work it out, but don't submit it to me until we're all done. It's gonna be many days we'll work on this. So if you click on fossil fuel guide down here, it should take you to this. So on the top of this, you need to put your name and your partner's name, so I know who the heck paper it is, all right? So put your name and your partner's name on here. Then you're gonna scroll down here, and I've got this roughly in order. Uh, you can see this, all right? The first group that we're gonna look at are the rugose corals. So maybe if you're working on this with a partner, your partner can work on the next one, you can work on this one, you can combine them, you can both work on the same one. Um, but we're gonna try and knock out two of these today, two parts to this. The first part is the rugose corals. Um, what you need to come up with is I gave you the information you need to find. So you're gonna put their kingdom, their phylum, their class, their subclass, and their order, okay? This is really easy to do, especially if you have Wikipedia. So let's give this a shot here. Let's go to Wikipedia. There we go, Wikipedia is a nice little thing on Rugosa. Oh, crap. <laughs> Hopefully if you're at home, this works. What? Okay. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you get to here and you'll find out some information about Rugos Cora. Coral. If you scroll down, Wikipedia does this really nice thing where it actually shows you kingdom, phylum, class, subclass, oops, and order. So it's named after its order. Super easy to do, right? You just answered the whole first part of that thing, like really easy, okay? Now, Rugo's corals are a whole group of corals, so I didn't ask for a genus and a species or anything like that. You might remember these from biology, right? Um, let me pop back over that. So, you answered all of these, you just put them right in there. Just pop them right in as you go. You don't need to change that. That's what it is. Down here, geological age. What time periods did it live? And I gave you an example right here. Delete this. Don't leave that on all of them. Go ahead and delete that, okay? Which time period in geological time did it live? In fact, I think Wikipedia has even got you covered here. It shows you right over here, it's temporal range. It lived from the Ordovician through the Permian. It's so easy, right? You can go elsewhere, you'll find the same answers, but Ordovician through the Permian, this is the whole of geological time from the Precambrian all the way up to present day. And so this thing was way back here. O is Ordovician, P is Permian, but it tells you right there, okay? So you can put both of those, I just put Ordovician through Permian there. So, so a lot of these things evolved and then went extinct. This is where it went extinct right here. Okay. Back to there. A little bit about natural history. So you need to read about it a little bit. Is it still alive today? Nope, it's extinct, right? It went extinct in the Permian is when it extinct, went extinct, the Permian mass extinction. Uh, you know, what did it eat? You don't have to say exactly what it ate, what, how it reproduced for every one, but just something interesting about it. Like, what was it? What did it do? Some of these things we'll look at, like they won't be just like, oh, it's coral. But maybe you don't know a bunch about coral. Then after you get that, you're going to put, you can look anywhere online for that. It doesn't have to be Wikipedia. Uh, a little bit of interesting facts about the organism, you know, how did it live, how did it reproduce, is it still living today? Then I've got a couple of sections here, okay? So, corn coral is a solitary rugose coral, okay? You don't have to get really technical here, but how would you tell you found corn coral? And I'm gonna have samples for you on all of these. You, if you don't have a sample to look at, definitely can look up a picture online. So, 
you can either take a picture of one of our samples or you can look up a picture online to insert. But I would definitely, if you're here in class, there's some so you can see them. These are horn corals. They grew off the bottom of the ocean like that. It's the bottom of it. And then the tentacles would have come out up here. There's another one right there. So you can see down inside of the callus there. Yeah. So you're going to get a photo of a fossil and put it in there. Okay. However you want to do it. Take a picture of one of these. You can take a picture offline, but just get one. Okay. This is a solitary, is a single solitary creature. Then down here is a colonial root ghost. Okay. How does that look different? This looks very different. This looks like a horn. It's like a single solitary thing, right? A colonial root ghost, let's see if I get these wet. Yes, you can kind of see this. You'll find a better picture online. But in a colony, some of these species had separate little coral lights. So each one of these is a separate little coral all living together in a colony. This one's actually pretty nice. You can just see it. If I got it wet, it would be better. You can see them in there. So these guys are all related, but these lived in a colony. The other species I showed you, the horned coral, lived solitary. Okay. So you've got two parts there. Okay. If you want to make a drawing on your own, we'll add a little extra credit. If you want to take a picture of your drawing and put it in there. Uh, so. To really learn what a fossil looks like, if you draw it, it will really help you know what it looks like. And I've got that for all these. So after that, we're gonna try and knock out two of these. The next one is the crinoid. Its common name is a sea lily. So nice to call them that. For this one, I just want kingdom fast phylum in class. Okay, kingdom phylum in class. The geological period again. A little bit about it. How will you find it out in the field? Like, what does it look like? You can delete these, right? a photo, and if you want to do a drawing, you can. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna knock out both of those today. I'll show the folks at home what the crinoid looks like, if I can find one. We got some amazing ones in here, but to show you, this is what you're likely to find in the creek. So if you look close there, you're gonna see all these little circles. Those are actually parts of the stem. So it looks like a sea lily. When you look at a picture online, you'll know what I'm talking about. These are just the little segments that have broken apart and built up someplace and then became a fossil. Here is an actual head of one. Now it's hard to tell unless you know what you're looking at, but there's the base of it. And so this is the head and the, and the arms would have come out of this thing. Um, here is a piece of a stem. Like all those little circular things are all part of this stem. So what you're gonna find out when you look up the phylum is that these are actually related to starfish. And if you look inside of some of these, if you look really close, sometimes you'll see a little star-shaped pattern on the inside. This is not a plant. This thing was an animal. You can see just right in the middle of that, you might see some of the little stars in there. Okay, so try and knock those two out for today and we'll do some more later.